So what I'm going to do now is just go through the Amdahl's law um, part. So we, we in, very early on in the course, we ran the Sharpen example, um, which uh, did something quite simple. It read in a file from disk, distributed it to different processes. We did some image reconstruction to sharpen the image, then brought it back together again. Uh, and now, having discussed performance laws like Amdahl's law, we can try and um, we can try and understand that quantitatively. And so, what I wanted to do for this practical was to plot a graph of the speed up against the number of processes p, um, running up to about a hundred. Um, both speed up of the just the pure calculation part and the, and, and the the entire uh, part of the calculation. Um, and to try and quantify that. Um, you can try and fit the data to Amdahl's law, but uh, I mean, for a simple example, it's often easiest just to do a few plots and see which one fits best. Um, and I'll come back to the last two points. Um, but first, uh, first of all, here is some test data which I showed in a previous tutorial, where I have here um, the total time, the calculation time, which this includes. Sorry. Uh, this is the speed up based on the total time, which includes I/O, which is the which is the serial overhead. So, if we think about Amdahl's law, Amdahl's law says that the overhead, the thing which stops program scaling, is that part of the program which which is a serial overhead, which cannot be parallelized, or more accurately, is a part which doesn't get faster when you run on more processes. And because this is a very simple program, the way it's written, because one process reads in the entire data set and then gathers it again at the end and does a bit of manipulation on it, um, there is a serial part, I.O., and a bit of calculation done by a single process, which isn't parallelized. And I've called that overhead I.O. when I report the timing here, because it is largely dominated by file I.O. So um, the total time doesn't scale particularly well, but the calculation time scales pretty well on 96 processes. It doesn't go 96 times faster, but it goes almost 80 times faster. What I wanted to do was try and quantify that. And so what I've done here is I've got the same data, uh, but what I've done, I've just done a little a little spreadsheet here, and I've just um, these are values for Amdahl's law based on particular values of alpha. And I'll look at this this um, this va this version here, where basically um, by varying this value here, I can see what the plot looks like. Now, actually, so I'm really interested in fitting this this red data, which is the overall time. Actually, I've picked. If I do something like 0 0.0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 5 you'll see that that's 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 um, overestimating the serial fraction. So I underpredict the performance. If I do 0 0.03, 0, 3, saying um, I get it wrong, and I just played around here, and I thought that 0 0.037 0, 3, was about the right value. So we're basically saying that. If we take Amdahl's law with alpha as 0 0.037, that's saying that the calculation is 3.7, about 4%, um, about 4% serial. Uh, then, um, then, um, uh, th then you get a good fit, and we can see that that's that's pretty good actually. The fit is pretty good all the way across the board. Does that value of three and a half, four percent make sense? Well, if we look at the raw data, uh, we can see that for the serial run. Um, we were taking about uh, four seconds, and the I/O time was always about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds, which is about you know three or four percent of 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 four seconds. Um, so you know that they sort of tie up the 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 fact we can attribute this serial overhead to the I/O. Um, we get an alpha value for about three and a half, four percent. That 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 matches with our our independent measurement of the I/O. So that's all self-consistent. You might ask, why does the pure calculation part not go scale linearly as it should with a pure Amdahl's law? Well, I, I've tried to fit it to Amdahl's law, but it doesn't really work. Um, there's lots of reasons why that that might be true. The main reason is that um, is that. Um, on a on a shared memory node like Archer has, we've seen that there is contention between the cores. The cores aren't completely independent from each other. So if you run on, if you fully load up a, a, an Archer node with 24 cores all running at full whack, they won't necessarily go 24 times faster than the, the, the than the um, than one core. Although you might in your mind think they're running independently because they're operating on different calculations, the hardware means that they interact with each other because there's this shared memory. So you never get perfect fit to Amdahl's law. But hopefully you'll see here that it's, it's really quite nice that we do see what we'd expect from Amdahl's law. A, that, the, that there is a part which scales 
almost linearly, scales almost perfectly, that's the independent calculation. More importantly, if we if we include the IO time, which we identified as the serial fraction, into in into our calculation of the speed up, we get this thing which tails off. And we can fit that pretty well with Amdahl's law with an alpha of 0.037. Again, the other thing about Amdahl's law is it says that with an infinite number of processes, your speed up is always limited by one upon alpha. 1 upon 0.037 gets you about, you know, 20, something like 25, 30 speed up. And you can see that, you know, this speed up is, is not going to get more than about 25. So it all hangs together. So although it's very hard, it is a very simple theoretical model. The, um, the Sharpen example was designed specifically to try and give you something which was, you know, a pretty pure representation of Amdahl's law. A, a, a recognizably serial part, the I.O., which isn't parallelized and won't get faster on multiple processes. A calculation part, which is completely independent and therefore hopefully will go P times faster on P processes. And together you get Amdahl's law. A final comment here I said on the on the, the instructions that <coughs> we cannot investigate Gustafsson's law with a sharpened example in varying the size of the image. Can you see why this is the case? Well Gustafsson's law is basically based on saying that bigger problems scale well because bigger if you use bigger problems normally the calculation part increases but the serial part stays the same. That's not true in this example because the serial part is IO. And so if we double the count the size of the image we double the amount of calculation, but we double the I.O. So the serial part and the parallel part both double. So that's why I've only given you one image size. Uh, you, you could investigate it by doing more calculation from the same image. You can increase the parallel part by, by, by actually increasing the amount of calculation you do, which, which here would involve increasing um, the value of D. That's the domain. So rather than doing a 17 by 17 square of pixels, you might do a 25 by 25 square of pixels if D was was 13. Uh, I haven't got that data here, but, but what you would see is that, that you would get very much the same effect. Uh, the I.O. time would stay the same, but the amount of calculation would be would be greater. The total time would be greater. More of that would be this parallel part, the calculation time, and your graph would scale. Um, your graph, your your graph would scale better. So if you increase d, what you would see, if I can find the spreadsheet, is that this part here would 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 scale. Um, would have a smaller value of alpha, and would therefore. Uh, you get you get faster speed up for a fixed number of processes. So I hope that showed you how the two parts tied together our theoretical discussion of Amdahl's law versus the actual experimental results, the real performance of this of this program, which neatly splits into both a serial and a parallel part.